from ABC News, The Weekend Report. Here's Charles Gibson. Good evening. The head of the NAACP said it today, racism is alive and well in America. He said it at a protest rally in Howard Beach, New York. It was there just a week ago tonight that a gang of white teenagers beat up three blacks and chased one onto a major highway where he was hit by a car and killed. Today, civil rights advocates marched in Howard Beach protected by hundreds of police officers. But even then, things were tense, as Bill O'Lott Riley reports. In what was one of the most intense racial confrontations in recent New York City history, 1,200 demonstrators marched through the streets of the white working class neighborhood of Howard Beach, protesting the death of Michael Griffith. Things turned ugly fast. around he has been broken into by blacks for a week now racial strife has been major news in new york last saturday michael griffith was struck and killed by a car as he fled a group of howard beach teens who had allegedly assaulted him and his two companions three days later a white teenager was beaten by a group of blacks in reprisal today the anger and hatred continued a black guy gets killed, yeah. and you're making the biggest you goddamn sick man. 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 A white girl! A white girl! Officials can see that racial tensions in New York are at a dangerous level, and Mayor Koch did not endorse this march, saying it would not do anything to improve the situation. But black leaders feel that racially motivated crimes must be publicly protested. The, the young man who was killed was not killed because he was in Howard Beach. He was killed because he was black. Three white teenagers have been arrested in the case, but the two black men who were assaulted with Griffith have been reluctant to cooperate in the investigation and the teens could be released Monday if they are not identified by the victims. Adding to the confusion, one of the assault victims, Timothy Grimes, was himself arrested this morning for stabbing his girlfriend. The case aside, many of the speakers at the rally after the march concentrated on the broader issue of racism. But as the police blocked bitter whites from interrupting that rally, it was clear that today's actions spoke louder than any words. Bill O'Reilly, ABC News, Queens. Time Magazine has chosen its Man of the Year, and it's a woman. Philippine President Corazon Aquino was selected. She was able to lead a revolt and rule a republic while making politics and humanity companionable, said the magazine. Others considered Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North and Mikhail Gorbachev. Mrs. Aquino is the first individual woman to win the award since Queen Elizabeth in 1952. Imagine the power of two great computer companies coming together as one. Resources not just doubled, but raised to the power of two. Introducing Unisys. True competition in the computer industry, and a single winner will emerge. You. I won $100,000 from Publishers Clearinghouse. That will happen all the way to the bank. We're speeding up the Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes to bring you our biggest jackpot ever, $21 million. In just one month, we start awarding the $21 million jackpot. On January 29th, we'll begin with the announcement of the $10 million winning number right on TV. Just watch your mail for this house, because only Publishers Clearinghouse can make you so rich, so fast. So enter. If Webster wanted a definition of the term culture shock, it might be what has happened to Soviet dissident Andrei Sakharov in the past week. For seven years, he was in exile, in virtual isolation, in the Soviet city of Gorky. Now back in Moscow, Hilary Bowker reports he is being besieged. The media mob scene began as soon as Andrei Sakharov got off his train in Moscow last Tuesday morning. Since then, he and his wife, Yelena Bonner, have entertained a steady stream of reporters in their apartment and he has done live interviews for U.S. News from Soviet TV. He says he understands all the attention, but finds it demanding. The contrast with my long years of complete isolation, my long deprivation of human contact, has been colossal. Zakharov said he went to a seminar at the Physics Institute the day he returned, and was warmly applauded. It gave me great pleasure to hear the paper begin, 
as Sakharov showed in 1967. Sakharov says he also works at home, where he's seen many friends. He's repeatedly said that he left Gorky on his own terms and is free to come and go as he pleases. There haven't been any attempts to stop the many Western journalists who've sought him out, but none of their reports has been shown here. He has yet to do a Soviet interview. I would greet the opportunity, but only if I'm not censored. It's Mikhail Gorbachev's new policy of glasnost, or openness, that Sakharov says he admires most about the current Soviet regime. But he lost no time in testing just how far he could take that policy. First, by criticizing the Soviet war in Afghanistan, and then by saying his country has a long way to go to improve its position on human rights. Hilary Balker, ABC News, Moscow. An extensive interview with Andrei Sakharov can be seen tomorrow on This Week with David Brinkley. In Islamabad, the capital of Pakistan, demonstrators were chanting, kill the Russians today. Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev was burned in effigy. The protesters were primarily Afghan refugees, 10,000 strong, marking the seventh anniversary of the Soviet invasion of their country. President Reagan today noted the joyless anniversary, and many European countries issued statements calling on the Soviets to end their occupation. A natural gas pipe exploded in a luxury ski resort hotel in the German Alps today, demolishing one wing of the hotel and touching off a fire. At least seven people were killed, 16 more injured. The 400-bed hotel was filled with skiers at the time. At first, IBM electric typewriters made typing easier. Then we improved the way typing looked and revolutionized its touch and feel. IBM even fixed the way errors got fixed. Today, IBM wheel writers and quiet writers do things our old typewriters never dreamed of. They're faster, quieter, they have memory, and can even signal mistakes as you make them. The typewriter secretaries like best just get better and better. Way your time. Golly good fellow, which nobody can deny. The gang's all here, the American Family Multimillionaires Club. And you may be joining the club this February. Grand prize, $10 million from American Family Publishers. Don't miss the sweepstakes with my picture. The American Family Winners Club wants you in the seat of honor. Right here. Next, next to, to us. us. They won millions. You could too. $10 million just two months from now. Join, Join us. Enter today. If you're a union member, your pension fund may be in danger. Mobsters and crooked union officials are stealing billions from those funds. Monday, watch ABC's World News Tonight. Giving scant attention to the Iran-Contra scandal, President Reagan in his weekly radio address said today that 1986 had been a good year. It will end on a good note for him, a little California peace and quiet, as Sheila Cast reports. With a jovial holiday greeting, President and Mrs. Reagan left the White House for a week's vacation in California. He had pre-taped his weekly radio address, which aired while Air Force One headed west. Mr. Reagan spoke of domestic accomplishments of 1986, including tax reform and job growth, and even of his latest problem. The Iran controversy has certainly been a disappointment for all of us. Nonetheless, I'm committed to getting all the facts and fixing whatever went wrong and 1986 has been a good year for the cause of human freedom and good for the cause of world peace. Only a few of the president's top aides accompanied him. Notably absent was Chief of Staff Regan, who will spend his vacation in Florida. Regan's position was strengthened this week when the president sided with him in appointing outgoing NATO ambassador David Abshire to be the president's special counselor on handling the Iran-Contra investigations. White House spokesman Larry Speak said Abshire's role will be purely reactive and advisory, not investigative. With his appointment, the president's aides seem to be settling in for the long haul, dealing with investigations by House and Senate select committees. Both committees are controlled by Democrats. They're going to drag it out. If they wanted to get to the end of it right away, they would simply give immunity, let North and Poindexter testify, and we'd have it behind us. The president and his aides have not been able to put the controversy behind them, so now they're trying to set up a system that will at least keep it from blocking all other initiatives in 1987. Sheila Cast, ABC News, with the president in Los Angeles. The New York Times reported today that White House officials have drawn up several lists of possible replacements for CIA Director William Casey if Casey is unable to continue in his job following his brain surgery. The White House denies the report, saying there is no long list, no short list, no list at all. 
I won two hundred fifty thousand dollars from Publishers Clearinghouse. Thank a million, Publishers Clearinghouse. We're speeding up a Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes to make it the fastest way for you to win ten million dollars. You could get fifty dollars just for entering if you speed up your ten million dollar entry. So hurry, the winning number will be announced on TV this January twenty ninth. Just watch your mail for this house, because only Publishers Clearinghouse can make you so rich so fast. So enter. What is the secret of a truly fine sparkling wine? It is the bubbles. Tiny bubbles like these. The smaller the bubble, the better the bottle. This is Vionici Spumante and Pink Spumante. More taste than champagne. Brighten up your holidays. Serve Rioniti at your holiday dinners and parties. Brighten up someone else's holidays. Give a Rioniti gift box. And may all your holidays be bright. From our Good Morning America family to yours, happy holidays. Italy is equated in people's minds with pasta, sun-drenched coastal towns, and large families, the latter a tradition that forced many Italians to emigrate to the United States. Well, pasta is still popular, the sun-drenched towns still draw tourists, but the large families, no more, as David Ensor reports. If this is your idea of the typical Italian family, think again. The nation whose exploding population once sent millions to America and Australia is now shrinking. The typical Italian mother doesn't have five children anymore. She has 1.4. One reason is that after years of banning contraceptives, now they are widely advertised, even on TV. And some parts of Italy have the highest abortion rates in Europe. We can find the, the regions with the, absolutely with the lowest fertility in the world. One uh, child per woman. Golini says Italy needs more children, and he wants the state to pay mothers to have bigger families, as France is already doing, and as Italian dictator Mussolini once did to build up his army. Otherwise, Galini says it will be empty schools, not enough workers, a country with white hair. The idea has the Catholic Church worried, to too. Ask, uh, what does that say about people's attitude to life? Uh, what does it say about people's attitude to the future? Even when such an important uh, religious leader as the Pope talks, a little bit freely, may I say, about the demographic suicide of Europe, I really do feel that these people are talking nonsense. Ferrarotti belongs to the other camp. One look at a crowded Roman street, he says, and you can see there are already too many Italians. The Italians are intelligent enough, practically speaking, to reduce their ability to procreate and to enjoy sex as a joy of life. The demographers and politicians who are worried about a shrinking Italy and a shrinking Europe are looking over their shoulders at Africa and Asia. Because of them, in the next 40 years, the world's population will more than double. Some Italians are beginning to feel besieged. So proposals to fill Italy's maternity wards with a new baby boom are now before Parliament. Proposals to pay mothers to have more children, to keep Italy Italian in the 21st century. David Ensor, ABC News, Rome. And that's the late news for this Saturday night. Sam Donaldson will have more news tomorrow on World News Sunday. I'm Charles Gibson in Washington, and for all of us here at ABC News, good night. From Washington, this has been the Weekend Report, a presentation of ABC News. This program was pre-recorded on videotape earlier this evening for presentation at this time.